Hello and welcome and thanks for stopping by to check out the ASP.NET e-commerce tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, please also make sure you check the description for discounts on online training courses. Now, uh, in the previous lecture we created the business and entities uh, project so we can have like a separation uh, between our own uh, let's say the app logic and uh, the uh, web project okay we have them separated and now what we're going to do we're going to create a new web application that supports uh, razor pages now why I choose razor pages uh, not uh, to continue with MVC now I shown you the previous one MVC just for demonstration and it's almost like uh, the razor pages there are some differences for sure but uh, if I would go I would go with razor pages uh, like because it's uh, much easier to handle and there are many out of the box things that I want you to use Rather than create by hand Now I'm gonna just enable my docker support and create the new application Now I need to come down here add a reference to my business project And I need to just inject the same thing and have the same settings available like I have to move the connection string over here and save this and move also the code for the DB context okay we will save this we'll take it we add it to the startup.cs and now we have uh, enabled the ability to use uh, razor pages or I'm sorry the entity framework with our own razor pages project now let me close all this and let's head over to the razor pages web app and see the main difference now you will notice that there are no controllers folder available okay uh, also we don't have the views folder all of our logic is inside the uh, pages folder and here we have all what we need now inside each page if I go to the index uh, page view uh, we will have right here expanded we have the page module for this view now when we talk about a wedge model we are talking about the code for the razor view and this code will be available inside the page itself so I can come down here maybe create a property and have it like uh, available throughout my model now what I will do, I will come down here and do the following, add a new folder for our users and notice that I'll come down here and I will do a new scaffolding item this scaffolding item notice that I have the ability to create a razor pages using entity framework CRUD now I'm going to use the user entities and I'm gonna use the data context and as soon as I hit add everything will be magically appearing for me inside the users folder and it will be all ready to use so we don't need to go and create it with our own hand now this shell be uh, much better for us and much easier to deal with if I head over to the index page for the uh, for the users notice that I have this iteration 
which is almost the same iteration that we have created in the previous lecture and notice as well we have automatic injection of the data context class and we have the list of user that is iterated over here notice that this if you hit F12 you will be navigating to this and as soon as we run this uh, project let's run it Uh, now just a kind reminder please make sure you subscribe to our channel like this video and also all the source code you can find it inside the description now if we head over to the users page notice we are presented with the list that represent all the users we have created previously which is something really nice and it's easier to have the ASP.NET creating all the uh, all the views that we need and we just simply come down here and deal with them notice we almost have all the CRUD operation we have the create we have the edit we have also the delete okay but notice that I want to do some enhancement for this first thing first I want to uh, add the link over here for my users so I can navigate to it so we're gonna head over to the views uh, let's check out the layout inside uh, the layout I come down here I have these navigation links and we are gonna uh, duplicate this one and if you notice these the like the bold item represent the tag helpers and we are gonna talk about the tag helpers in the next few lectures so I am gonna add my users link I'm gonna call this one users as well and I want you to notice with me something that the path for your razor pages is the file system so pages users inside it will be all your users pages and so on so you need to understand that now uh, we come down here let's close the close the layout page and let's head over to the index page now for sure I don't want to display my user's password so I'm gonna remove that from the list and also let's save it also uh, we head over to the create okay uh, I don't want to have the created at created for me okay I want the system to have the created at value by default set to the today date how we can handle this let's remove all this let's head over to the entities and hit over to the entity base and let's set the default value for created at of date time dot now so we don't need to set it also we are gonna edit the edit page okay now you maybe need to edit the created at date but less likely and I don't really recommend having this ability also we're gonna remove the password from the uh, details page okay 
So I guess we have added almost everything we need and I'll head over to the create page. I wanna hide the password characters. So I'm gonna head over here and select the type of my uh, input of password also edit it inside the edit page and this shall be sufficient to have a much decent looking uh, creation of the user area so if we go and see the new application we have the users okay I guess our link is not working so let's navigate by route and notice now we have it more better we don't see the password anymore we just see the created add date if we edit it we see only email and password and we have the password masked now if you see the password that is because I have an extension on my uh, browser over here to show the passwords okay now we head over to the list let's create a new user I'm gonna give it the name of a new at user.com and give it this password notice that I am presented with the newly created user uh, plus the date time of now okay now also uh, what I want to do I want to come down here try to delete it and it's deleted if I edit it I can edit it and change the password and so on so we almost have like all the current operation for this now let's talk a little bit about security now if I head over to the database and show you the table of the users now when we add a new value to the uh, table of users inside our application we are storing the uh, password in a plain text now let me show you it we have the password over here that is stored in a plain text and anybody can access the database will know the password now in the next few lectures we talk about security we will be handling this issue and we will not allow anyone to see the password and store it securely in the database now uh, when uh, I show you this or why I show you this that is because you need to consider all uh, the security aspect for your e-commerce application since uh, it might be a target of attacks okay you don't uh, want to have uh, anyone having the ability to access your site and know all your users data now uh, i hope you enjoy and find this tutorial to, uh, useful uh, in the next tutorials we will go much deeper and see how we can add more entities to this uh, work with more complex data also check the description for the source code and discounts on online training thank you for watching